This video is brought to you by the ASRock Tai Chi X299 CLX. This is a brand new X299 motherboard that's been refreshed for the 10 series X299 CPUs. This will be a great pairing with the 12, 14, or even 18 core CPU. The PCIe layout here on this motherboard is pretty great. It's X16, X8, X16, X8. The second X8 slot is disabled if you're going to run two M.2s. That means the M.2s go directly into the CPU, which is not something we saw on earlier motherboards. Overall, it's a pretty intelligent design, pretty well put together. A single gigabit LAN and a 2.5 gigabit Realtek LAN. This is the perfect platform for your X299 based build. It also has onboard Intel Wi-Fi 6, that's 802.11ax, as well as a 20 gigabit, yeah, two channel USB type C connection on a module at the rear IO. We've got a problem. This is the Intermax Lick Tech 2. Yeah, check out the gunk. Look at this. So I've already taken the pump apart, and it's really it's pretty easy. You just take some screws out of the copper plate on the bottom. Be sure not to uh, drop the screws down the drain. Relax, that's just coffee stains. Yeah, don't drop the screws down the drain. That would be bad. So this is the generation two. You guys see Gamers Nexus's video where they took these apart. I'm uh, I'm inclined to agree. I think these are filled with Chinese tap water. I don't think there's a biocide in there because look at that, that's terrible. I noticed reduced performance with this on the 2950X. It's been running 24 seven basically since I got this. This came from Newegg. This was not a sample or anything like that. This is literally retail. So this is like stuff you guys would buy. But you know, this isn't a terrible pump combo we can fix this we just need a little bit of distilled water and a little bit of uh a little bit of mayhems yeah this is the good stuff this is normally stuff that you put in a custom loop but we're gonna get some distilled water and we're gonna fix this yeah we're in my super retro bathroom but <laughs> it's all metal walls so the, the echo is gonna be really terrible this this is the problem this gunky junky just nasty mess Fortunately, I have a cleaning toothbrush. Now that's much better looking than what Steve had, but still not great. At least the rubber pad hasn't disintegrated. That's something that's, uh, you know, small favors, right? Be careful with your rubber gasket. You want to clean that with a paper towel, ideally with, when you don't have thermal paste all over your fingers and make sure that it's contaminant free, that it's just basically rubber. And ideally this rubber is not, not brittle. I mean, you don't want to yank on it or, or do terrible things to it, but uh, it should be a little sticky. Like, should feel like rubber, basically. Like a, almost like a rubber band, but not quite. Now the next problem is flushing the pump. So, you don't want to submerge the pump, but you want to give it the ability to get water. You also don't want to run the pump dry because that's really hard on the pump. But you can see that I've got some, you know, some contaminant in here, some, you know, foreign junk. And I really want to get all that out of here. I've also got two ports on the side here. These are your normal interface for like your fill port or whatever, but uh, I'm going to actually do this a little different. I'm gonna submerge this just a little bit in water just to clean it out and see what it does. This is a plastic shoe box that I picked up from um, the dollar store. And there's probably some plasticizer and other contaminants in here. So you wanna wash this out. Now I washed it out ahead of time, but you'll, you wanna really rinse and wash this out like three or four times to get any kind of contaminants out of your plastic container. You could also use a glass container, but after we use the uh, the Mayhem's Biocide, it's not going to be food safe anymore. So keep that in mind if you if you do decide to use a container. Don't use a food container. Definitely do not do that. Now to be sure, this fluid looks a lot better than the stuff that Steve had, but there was still a lot of little foreign floater junk in it. Now it comes time to do it for real. We've got our distilled water here. Distilled water is what you want to use for a more permanent solution. We're gonna end up wasting a lot of distilled water, but that's okay. A 
We're also going to add our biocide. It says to shake vigorously. So I did. So the trick is to fill the radiator, but then don't let the water escape. So now what we're going to do is very carefully put this back together, try to seal it, and then pump in a bit more water here. Generally, you want to do these screws in opposite corners, and you don't want to tighten them all the way. You just want to sort of snug it, and then you can go back and, and tighten it a little bit more so that you get even pressure on the seal. That's not too shabby, if I do say so myself. Now we're gonna take the port on this other side, which will be our inlet. And so that'll let a lot of, uh, a lot of fluid come in. And I'm gonna close this side, but I'm not sure that's the best idea. We'll give that a try. Now to get the air bubbles out, you, this needs to be the highest point in the system. So that's going to be tricky. So now with the pump off, I'm going to try to, you know, rock this back and forth with the pump turned up to see if I can get any air bubbles to show up. Seems like we're in pretty good shape in terms of air bubbles. That's kind of what you want to see. It's like a little bubbling up of fluid. And... That is about as bubble free as we can make it. So we got a little bit of air in our Intermax loop, no problem. You can just cut the top off of a plastic water bottle and use a little bit of poster putty to seal so that we've got a little reservoir. And basically you just let the air bubbles drain out. The whole process takes about 10 or 15 minutes. You gotta turn the pump off and back on a few times. It's not really a big deal. You can use a straw to drop just enough water in there so that you don't get more air bubbles. Well, there we are. That wasn't too bad. The hardest part, see, normally with a custom loop system, you've got a separate reservoir. And the reservoir is really going to help you in terms of, you know, being able to get all the air bubbles out of the system, or at least making sure that there's not air bubbles trapped in the hoses or the fluid or whatever. If you can do most of the work underwater, but without getting the electronics wet, not getting the electronics wet is key because, you know, where the cable goes in, where the RGB connection is, that's not sealed. So don't get that wet. But if you can keep the air bubbles out of the system and you don't wait too long, you know, your Intermax closed loop system is not bad. You just need to use good coolant with a good biocide because it doesn't seem to have a, a biocide or maybe it's mixed metals or something. I mean, theoretically there's no light in there so it shouldn't grow, but then there's heat. So maybe something will grow in there. There was definitely something that looked vaguely organic to me and you know, half the cold plate was clogged. So I'm gonna let this run for a little bit, make sure it sounds reasonable, and then I'll put it back together and see how this works. I'm Wendell, this has been another level one diagnostic. Hopefully you're, uh, you know, don't throw out the Intermax cooler. You can totally fix it mostly, just with a toothbrush. If it's really stubborn, you've got a lot of calcification and things like that, you're gonna have to run several cycles through your radiator. The, the Mayhem's guys actually do make uh, some radiator cleaner stuff, it's so like the blocks and especially the radiator must be clean and have no chemicals of any kind left in the system. We recommend you flush the system with Mayhem Blitz Pro before use. That's a little overkill for rehabilitating an all-in-one cooler, but you can totally do that with your Intermax CLC, especially the second gen. I think the second gen is a little bit better engineering than the first gen, even though the coolant uh, still leaves a lot to be desired. So at least it wasn't as terrible looking as what Steve had from Gamers Nexus, but still not pleased but it's just gonna have to go custom loop so you can keep an eye on it. It's too bad. This is a pretty pretty efficient, pretty clever little design. I'm Wendell, this is level one, I'm signing out. It could be more pictures and stuff like that in the level one forum. So if you want more info or you wanna share your own teardown or war stories, join us in the forum at forum.level1text.com. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out and I'll see you there.